Hello, my friend, JT Tapius with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. And today we are going to speak about emotions, particularly about the emotions involved in any diet plan. That is right. If you have ever been on any kind of diet, you realize that it is one of the most emotional things that you can ever do. And if you've never experienced it, I'm telling you, my friend, stay and watch this video because I'm going to show you some shocking things that actually happen to most people when they come on nutrition programs and the reason the vast majority of people are not successful or even worse, they're successful, they lose the weight, but then they regain it because they don't understand that emotions are heavily involved in your sustainability. In other words, in order to sustain these nutrition protocols, we have to understand emotions. And so here we go. Stage number one is what we called uninformed optimism. And uninformed optimism basically says that you are excited you feel like this is going to be the best thing ever. You keep fantasizing about your new physique. You can't wait to get started, right? Maybe there's a starting date for that particular diet and you're just, you are elated. You are ready to go. You have all these fantasies, all these ideas on what's gonna happen inside of the diet. You start to think about the summer and how you're gonna look in your new physique and how you're gonna feel. And that is the stage of uninformed optimism, right? You really don't know what it's gonna take for you to get to that place where you wanna go with this particular diet. Stage number two is what we call the informed pessimism. Now, this is a couple of weeks into the program where you start to feel some friction. You realize, whoa, I'm being pushed outside of my comfort zone. There's some things I don't really like, but I'm still pushing through. And I know that this calls for me to be a completely different person, but yet I'm still there. I'm still sort of thinking about the way I'm gonna look. And there's still sort of some kind of, of informed pessimism there. I'm starting to feel the friction, the adversity, but I'm still willing to go forward with it. Stage number three is what we call the valley of despair. Now, let me warn you, not everyone gets to the valley of despair. I think people that get to the valley of despair are the ones that week one through three sort of dilly dally a little bit takes them a little while to get going. Maybe they try a couple of things. Maybe the first couple of times they check in, the scale is not favorable because they haven't been doing necessarily everything the coaches asked them to do. And now they're in this place of despair, right? The Valley of Despair is a place where you start to doubt if you should have jumped on this program in the first place. You start to point fingers at the coach, at the program. You start to make up a ton of excuses on why you can't actually adhere to the principles. And it's a tricky, tricky place because you start telling yourself things and you start remembering previous diets, you have preconceived notions. This is what I call rear view driving. You're driving the car, looking through the rear view mirror, thinking of your previous experiences, and this is dictating how you're actually doing or not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. This is a tricky, tricky place because this is a place where a lot of you guys have fallen off right? You started off well, maybe you lost a couple of pounds, you encountered some friction. And instead of confronting those limiting beliefs, those preconceived notions, communicating with your coach and turning things around, you just sort of put your hands up in the air and you gave up. The Valley of Despair is a tricky place where a lot of people fall into and they never get out. Stage number four is what we call informed optimism. At this point, you know, you're a couple weeks in, probably anywhere between six to eight weeks in, and you realize this is no joke. That food is one of the biggest components and dynamics in our lives. And that literally your life is being turned upside down because you start to realize that you had some crutches, you had some vices in regards to food. Maybe you reach for food anytime you were happy, sad, bored, or simply you just had nothing better to do. So you would just venture into the fridge, grab a couple of things, and that secreted dopamine and made you feel good. Now you don't have those crutches and you're starting to feel that friction, right? And this informed optimism basically says, look, I, I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the discomfort. I don't like being pushed outside of my comfort zone. But you start to see pictures of yourself a couple of weeks prior to jumping on the program. And you go, I, I'm never going back here. I'm not doing this anymore. I, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I know it's hard, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And of course, that leads you to stage number five, and this is success and fulfillment. Success and fulfillment basically is when you realize, man, that was tough, but I'm glad I went through it. I followed the instructions. I put my head down for six to eight weeks. I did what I needed to do. And now here I am on the other side and I am 
you know, 15, 25, 30 pounds down. I feel amazing. I look great. People are, are starting to point it out and tell me, you know, ask me what I'm doing. And, and, and people are just complimenting me. And I'm, I have all this momentum and this enthusiasm. And I realize I'm never going back. And because I've done the program so well for six to eight weeks, now I get to practice an 80 20 things loosen up a little bit. I, I don't have to exert so much discipline. I let my discipline muscle rest from time to time, meaning that I get to eat some things that I actually enjoy. So I'm not the weird person at the party drinking diet water. And it feels good. I realize it's, 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 it's tough, but I'm not willing to go back and I'm never going back regardless because I understand now what it takes to actually maintain a healthy, good looking, strong, body and I'm willing to do that. I love the feeling of waking up inspired and being able to channel my energy into the things that I deem important in life. And I'm getting great results, not just from a physical standpoint, but I'm starting to see how these things spill over very positively into other areas of my life. I am mentally acute. I, my retention is good. I feel like I'm just on fire and it all has to do because I'm feeding my body the right nutrients, I'm moving in the right way, I'm resting well, I'm hydrating well, I'm doing all these things and because this vessel needs fuel like any other vessel and I'm putting the right type of fuel in, now I'm producing the results that I've always wanted. I look and I feel amazing and I'm never going back. This is the stage five of success and fulfillment. If the, the, the client, the member has followed all the protocols, they've adhered to the principles, they in our program, we have a monitor that we wear. We ask our clients to wear the monitor. So we wear, they, they, they've wore the monitor. They've meal prepped for 60 to 90 minutes alongside their grocery shopping. They've had effective communication with the coach. They've been reviewing the pillars and going through and making sure that they're firing off on all the instructions that the coach gave them. They're watching out for people, places, and things that are triggering and tempting. And now they're aware of their environment more so than ever before. And based on those distinctions, now they're making more powerful decisions uh, on food, on who they hang out with, on where they go, and they just become very aware of their environment. And they see this as a vehicle for personal growth. If that person is doing that, they get to stage five and they maintain results. Scenario number two, it's a bit more sad. Scenario number two says that they're rear view, rear view driving, meaning that they're thinking about preconceived notions, limiting beliefs. They continue to reward themselves with food. They start to think of this in a way uh, where they feel it's restrictive and they just can't live like this. And they're telling themselves these stories. They blame boredom, the coach, the program, anything that they can except bringing personal responsibility to the actual uh, situation right and so because of this they fall back they never get to to bring their goals to fruition simply because they are just stuck in a place in where they never get to that success and fulfillment because they're very caught up in limiting beliefs and previous uh, situations or diets that they've been on and if these limiting beliefs just keep them down now i have to say that anyone has the possibility to succeed especially within the empty your bucket nutrition plan. Our stats say that eight out of 10 people that come through a program are incredibly successful. The two people that don't make it are simply people that are not ready in their heart of hearts or not coachable, meaning that there are two dynamics that come into play. A person is either committed, meaning that they're going to do whatever they need to do to make things happen, or they're simply interested, which means that they're gonna do what is convenient. If you are committed, and if you're on the other side of this and maybe you've done a program like this and you're successful, you realize that you were successful because you were committed. On the other hand, if you've done a program like this and you have not succeeded, it is simply because you have not been fully, fully committed and you were just interested, meaning you just did what was convenient. And based on that, you stayed in that level of the valley of despair. And so wherever it is you are, if you've been successful, I want to commend you for your follow through. If you failed, I'm here to tell you that there is a possibility, but we have to make the mental shift. And more so than the dynamics of dieting or the coach or the program, we have to be ready in our mind, in our body, in our spirit in order for success and these goals to be brought to fruition. Because a lot of times we tackle this thinking that it's just if I control my hunger or if I get the right dynamics down or if I get the right coach, 
then I'm gonna succeed and nothing can be further from the truth. All these things come together. If you've experienced this before, my friend, you know exactly what I am talking about. I hope you got something out of this video, the five stages of any diet, specifically the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. I hope you were able to resonate with some of these things. If you have been successful, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have not yet been successful, there's some things here to consider, some distinctions that you can make and move forward and bring your goals to fruition because I truly believe that everyone can be successful at this if they are fully, fully committed. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you're gonna absolutely love this video here. My name is JT Tapius with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ciao.